I just got a really weird feeling. I mean, it's just a feeling, but it's there, here, you know. <laughs> I have the feeling that today, on day 8 of Defamoramba, we are not going to have this kind of relevant drying time. Do you know what I mean? And if you have watched day one to seven of Defamoramba, you know drying time is always snack time. But what to do if you know that you don't will have drying time? <laughs> I think it's a good idea to go to the desk there where all of the leftover paper bags are for the rest of Defamoramba and grab the snack and take the snack before we do anything else. I mean, missing the snack, that's not an option. <laughs> do you know what I mean? So let's go. Ooh, why is this so light? <laughs> is here really a snack in this paper bag? <laughs> we will see. I'm getting another really weird feeling <laughs> because this is so light that I have the feeling that there's either a snack with really less calories that could be the reason why it's so light or <clears throat> there's no snack at all in this paper bag. Both of the options are not really uh, you know, uh, good for my brain and for today's project, but we will see. I will open the paper bag now. Oh, it's <laughs> it's actually really small. So this really tiny snack comes from Bulgaria. I hope that I'm saying that right. So I will just remove this little label that Barbara has put here so that I can show you the whole package of this. So this is really uh, tiny, as I thought. <laughs> And the package is <clears throat> like a three-dimensional triangle, so it's really hard to show that in the camera. I will just take these things out that are in there so that I perhaps have the chance to show you what's on the package. Okay, so the package looks like this. There's a little bear. And there's also this little girl here so the package here says tattoo so what does that mean i mean tattoo hey huh? what oh oh here's something inside of the package so let me see if i can take that out it's just in here so here i can show that to you it's like it's like this so what is that ah you can lift that up i guess you have to put that to your skin somewhere so it's on this transparent uh, thing here and then i guess where shall we put that i mean perhaps here <laughs> perhaps like this <laughs> but how to get this thing off i mean do i have to add water what what's the packaging saying ah i got it you have to you have to rub it and then the plastic can comes off i mean water would make absolutely no sense but this works <laughs> so no now it's here like this oh my goodness i can't bring that to the camera so that it's clear but you will see it in a second again really interesting this little bear and these little thingies here they look like smarties in my eyes But they taste a little bit different than Smarties. These are a little bit more creamy and a tiny bit slimy. Slimier than Smarties, if Smarties are slimy. So I think these little guys... How do you say that in English? 
are not on my alley. That's not correct, I know. <laughs> my goodness, that is not correct. Not my cup of tea. Is that right? Also, so I really don't like this slimy thingy inside. It's really strange. So this gets three out of 10 for the rating. Um, and by the way, the animal for today is the butterfly. That's really good. That's really, really good because I got a really cool idea on today's prompt and with butterflies. That's absolutely great. Okay, so let's go. <laughs> this package also goes into my candy journal, of course. And this little tattoo feels really weird on my hand. This is really crazy. I'm wondering if I can get that off and bring that to the journal as well. Oh no, that's not possible. Quick note to myself, if you have a shower between recording the German video and the English video, then you will end up with still having blue and greenish color on your fingers, but your little bear tattoo uh, will have been nearly removed. <laughs> Obviously, this is not as waterproof than distress oxide spray is. <laughs> so please excuse the staining of my fingers. I guess that this will not fit today's colors, but let's see. <laughs> so the butterfly is the animal that we can use today. And the prompt for today is beads and postage stamp dangle. Perhaps you're wondering, what is a postage stamp dangle? I have absolutely no idea what that is. <laughs> Even if I have come up with this word with Barbara. So we had put our heads together and we thought about some words that we can put to the list. Some names for ephemera, of course. And we have some of those more usual names like, for example, playing card or coin envelope or ticket. All of those terms that you know from the junk journal world but we also thought about some things where you have to think a little bit more about what that actually is and that is here the same with postage stamp dangle so that is something that we have built out of different terms that we already know i mean we use post-its postage stamps really often in our junk journals and we also create dangles for our junk journals but this combination is something special so that's what we thought behind this so that means we have to think about how a postage stamp dangle could look and we have to include beads and we can use the butterfly <laughs> and I thought about something that I hope is new. I couldn't find anything like that on social media, on YouTube or wherever, so I think that it is new. For this idea, we are going to need some butterflies. I have some fuzzy cut, some, I have a ton of fuzzy cut butterflies here. These come from my Etsy shop, so the most of them. I have some here from um, magazines. This, for example, is from 49 Dragonflies from the here, a uh, five digital item swap that we did with Rhonda Winstead. Some are from Daphne's Diary and so on. But the main uh, thing here is comes from my own Etsy shop. There's Butterflies Volume 1 and 2 available as fuzzy cut images as a digital download. If you have watched yesterday's video, you know that there's a little goodie. So if you have missed that and if you want to have the butterflies... I can recommend to watch yesterday's video because there's a little goodie hidden in the video. Um, that's a promo code that you can use to get those butterflies. So if you want to have that code, then please watch yesterday's video. And I want to have some of these butterflies for today. Uh, I'm not sure which color I need at which size. So let's see 
what's the best for the page that I want to use. And I can recommend um, to do that with your own journal as well. So I thought, <clears throat> I mean, first check the size of the page and the colors and that stuff. And then choose the butterflies that you would like to use. I thought I want to use this page. When I saw this page for the first time, I was totally in love and I'm still in love with it. I have the biggest respect to put something to this page and I'm so hoping that my idea will look pretty in the end on this page because this is just gorgeous. What Barbara did here, this is this is just amazing. I think I want to do it this way. I mean, that really doesn't matter how you arrange your butterflies. Of course, that's personal preference. But what I can recommend is the following thing. Try to find a butterfly that has a relatively big body. Do you know what I mean? So this is, can you see that when I put my finger here, um, then this part of the butterfly is approximately the same size like my finger is. You will see in a second why that is important. Um, try to find butterflies that are not too small. The next thing after distressing these is um, I'm taking a piece of paper. This is just a little bit thicker paper, I think 200 GSM. Um, this is eco dyed, and as you can see, I made some mistakes here. This got really black, but I can still use the rest of this, of course. And then I'm going to take a pencil, and I want to trace around the butterfly now. Uh, but please make sure that you don't put the butterfly too close to the edge of the paper, because uh, we want to leave later on when we cut that out a little frame, but. When I trace this now, I go exactly along the edge of the paper here so that I get the exact shape of my butterfly here, like this. So my pencil line is now exactly the same size like the butterfly is. I'm writing number one here and number one here just for my own orientation. And then I'm taking this and I'm cutting that out, but when I cut that out, I'm leaving a little frame because then later on I want to punch around this shape to make a butterfly-shaped postage stamp. <laughs> so you can take the butterfly if you want and place that here for uh, a better orientation and then you can start cutting here. So. I can recommend to leave a little frame that is about a few millimeters wide like this but of course you can vary this and this also depends on the punch that you will use in the next step I will show you that in a second I will just cut this out and do the same thing for the other both I will just take them trace them to my paper and then I will cut around with this little distance here to the pencil line. Okay, so when we have that, we have three of these really strange looking butterflies now. And then I'm going to take this uh, piece here that I've just made and I'm taking a hole punch. So this is one that makes a really small hole and only one hole. and now I'm going to punch in here like this so that I get this frame around my butterfly that looks like a postage stamp. So I want to imitate this frame that we know from a normal postage stamp. And um, since I've recorded the German video yesterday, I have learned some things because uh, this is actually the second time that I'm doing this. The first time was yesterday for the other video. And I've learned some things. And I would like to share that with you, of course. So when you put that here, uh, when you have um, approximately one of the wings done with this punching, 
then I can recommend to put the butterfly here to see if you like the frame or if it's too big or too small. So I'm taking this and I'm putting this here into the position where it will go later and I will then decide if that is okay for me or it, if it's too uh, too big or too small. So here, hmm, the background <laughs> is really matchy matchy with this. So I'm thinking about perhaps <clears throat> distressing this base so that um, that comes out a little bit more. I think the, the size is actually really good, but I don't like this irregular punching. So of course you can repunch these things so that it looks a little bit more reg regular. I mean, we are making a junk journal, but you know, um, this looks a little bit, bit better than before. And when I like that, what I have here, then I go around the rest of the butterfly in the same way. And I'm doing that with the other two as well, of course. So I have all of my three bases cut out and now I'm just going to distress them a little bit. This is ground espresso oxide ink. And I think, yeah, this will stand out way better later. Okay, so now uh, we can take the both matching pieces, the butterfly and the base, and then we can put them on top of each other. I still have my pencil mark here um, that helps me to see where this has to go. So I'm placing this here. Don't glue it now, yeah, because then this idea wouldn't work. <laughs> we are just putting this here. Hold that in place and then I'm taking a punch that makes a bigger hole than before, than, than this one that I've used for the edge. And I'm just punching through both of these layers to get this hole. And then I'm deciding if I want to make this hole a little bit bigger. As you can see, <clears throat> here there are still some space left of the body of the butterfly. That means I can go in and just punch around here a little bit to make this hole a little bit bigger. Of course, you can make that as big as you want, but I can recommend to go not too close to the frame here and there of this butterfly or the paper, actually. So I'm trying to get something like this. <laughs> looks a little bit strange, I know. Then I'm taking my little finger sponge and I'm just going over this to distress this hole there a little bit as well so that it looks not so strange. And I'm doing that for the other both as well, exactly in the same way. Um, here for this bigger one, I can of course make the hole bigger than on the other one. And now I want to try something that I have never done before. I want to try <laughs> to make these wings of the butterfly look like broken glass, but matte broken glass, not glossy. Uh, <laughs> I'm a little bit afraid of doing that. I have no idea if that will work, but Defemorembra, you know, is the time where you can try out things that you've never done before and when I see all of the posts on Instagram and also on YouTube that you have posted during the last week then I can tell you have understood what Defemorembra is <laughs> because you have done so many amazing things and that is abs absolutely gorgeous so I'm taking embossing ink from this dabber and then clear embossing powder I'm going to emboss this and uh, then when this is still hot I'm adding a second layer so I've just cut out the noise of my embossing um, tool so this is just coming from the tool and now I'm adding a second layer and then I'm going to emboss that again 
and I think that this is still not enough. So I, I've realized with the second layer that it sticks not so well to the surface. So I'm just letting this cool down a little bit and then I'm adding another layer of the ink so that I can make sure that more powder will stick here. This powder is actually really fine, so perhaps that's the reason why that works not so extremely well. And we need more layers, but we are patient today. <laughs> so now I can see they are sticking way more powder. And it's okay for me that it's so irregular. I really like that, so I will emboss that again. That looks way better than before, so I think in the camera you can't see it, but it's really thick now and I think shall we add another layer I guess I will I will just add another layer so that it is really really thick so that looks really cool but it is totally glossy of course and for my page I really don't like this glossiness so what I'm doing now is I'm taking a piece of steel wool and I'm going over this. Oh, it works. <laughs> I have seen that in one of the Tim Holtz demo videos. He has done that with embossing glaze. I mean, there's also matte clear embossing powder available of course but this was glossy and now it is matte really cool and what i want to try now is i want to try to break this to get <laughs> that doesn't work ah! to get to get this like broken glass i guess i have not not enough layers of the of the powder oh my goodness that doesn't work no, that doesn't work. It's really flexible. It it breaks a little bit here and there, but not not like I want it. Ooh. Okay, so I have to bend the paper really much, then it breaks. But really not like I wanted it. Can you see that? These tiny cracks in there. But that is this is not what I want so uh, what I am doing now is I will add more layers of the clear embossing powder to get this um, layer of the powder thicker because then I think uh, we have the chance to break that better and and then we have more of these little damages here so I will just do that off camera so if this now is not enough I can't help myself <laughs> then it's not working I can't break it. What is that? I mean, what the heck? Oh, yeah. No. Okay, so you have to bend the paper really much. I mean, nearly like you would fold it totally. Then it works. But not as well as I thought. Okay, and it's coming off here. The powder, the, the layer of this plastic thingy now, this powder comes off. Not so nice. What the heck? I mean, it looks not so bad, I have to say. Hm. I mean, it looks cool, doesn't it? But... Yeah, can you see that? This comes off. <laughs> but perhaps we can make something cool out of this effect. I mean, what if we take off the loose pieces huh. I'm going to make my own effect. I'm just going in here and 
taking some of this off. Why not? So I, I just check where it wants to fall off and there I'm taking it off. And if anyone has a good tutorial about what I actually want to do, I mean broken glass effect with <laughs> embossing powder, please leave a comment and let me know where I can check a tutorial out because this is cool but this is not what I actually wanted to do. But we will fix this now so that the rest can't come off and that the things that came off make a cool new effect. This is this hard coat Mod Podge and I will just seal the surface with this Mod Podge. This is not totally matte but I'm okay with that. I want to avoid that the pieces here are falling off. So I'm living with the fact that it will be not totally matte in the end. And now of course I have to let this air dry otherwise I would remelt my embossing powder so I can't use my heat gun now. And while the butterfly is drying we can go on with the page here and when we can prepare what we want to do next. So next I'm going to take a thread. I uh, want to go with this black thread here. I have made myself this little storage box here. This is just a yarn dispender. <laughs> so I have put some different yarns in here. If you want to see a video tutorial about this, then check out the info box. There is a tutorial for you available on my channel. And now I'm going to take a thread that is approximately three times the height of my page. And when I have that, I'm making a little knot on one end of these three threads so that um, all of the three are here together and the knot is here. I'm choosing the position where my butterflies later on shall go, like this. And when I have this position, I'm just stapling the thread on the bottom here to the page. Let's just check what's on the other side. So I can't destroy anything. And then just go in and staple this. Of course you can also glue that, but stapling for me is the easiest solution here. And then I'm taking the thread and I'm making sure that this knot is directly meeting the staples not like this because because you know below the staples it can move and i don't want that i want to have that do you know what i mean like this so that it can't move anymore and then uh, i'm taking the butterfly that will go here later and now i want to decide uh, about the beads that i want to use because beads is on the prompt list, isn't it? <laughs> so I have taken out my plate with beads here. <laughs> Hard choice now. Um, and I want to choose something that can go into this little hole that we've made into this little butterfly shaped postage stamp. I want to choose something that's not too bulky um, and that is matching the colors. This one would work. Perhaps the hole is a little bit too small. These have really big holes and these have this shine. Really cool, but ah, that's too big. No, that is too big. It's too big for my hole and I don't want to make the hole bigger. That would look absolutely amazing. The color matches really well uh, to the page. Um, I think I will go with these, but um, this is still a little bit boring. And we have space to put another one on top of that. And that should be perhaps something that is really tiny and outstanding. So I'm thinking about a golden one that is small really small like these I think that should work 
so what I'm doing now is I'm taking this one that will go later on uh, in here and this one is the last butterfly here on the page so the one on the bottom so that means this one has to go to the thread first um, so that it gets into the right position later like this then we need some of the golden ones as well. So next I'm putting a golden bead to the thread. Like this. Can you see it? It's really tiny. Oh my goodness, it's here now. And then you can take this and you can check if you like that. Just place that on top like this so that you can see if you like how this looks. Later on we will glue the black thread in between of these both layers here so that the butterflies and the beads stay in place forever. But for this step I can recommend to first bring all of your beads to the thread to see how that looks. That's way more easy. Um, for the middle one I think we can go with gold green gold because this is bigger the hole here is bigger so I'm just taking this off and I'm putting three more beads to the thread so when you have them here you can just take this and check if the size fits this is just perfect and it looks really interesting and then I will put another green one and another golden one to the thread for the top butterfly and that will be exactly the same like I have it here on the bottom the green here and the golden one here and when I have that it looks like this and I can start gluing this bottom butterfly here so that means I have to decide where it shall go And now you have to decide for the exactly right position because afterwards you can't move the butterfly to another position. So that means I'm taking the other bases to get an imagination how that could look good. And you can also, because this thread of course is moving around a lot, you can just take such a clamp and just clamp the thread here on the top to the page so that it can't move anymore and th that you get a, be a better imagination what you are doing and that it's easier to glue. So I think this is the position for this bottom one. And when you have found the position, you can take some glue, take this off for a moment, and wait, Louisa. <laughs> then we, of course, need some feelers for the butterflies. Uh, butterflies without feelers, that would look a little bit strange, these little antennas. And I'm just taking these and I'm cutting them in half. Normally, if I would take these and glue them to a full butterfly without such a hole inside, then I would just take them and cross them like this uh, and then glue them to the back of my butterfly and then the antennas would uh, stay really good in place, but here that's not possible because of this hole. So that means I have just cut them in half and now <clears throat> I'm putting some glue to this base here and then I'm also putting some glue to this thread here just a tiny little bit so that it can be really good in place later and that uh, the butterfly can't move. So then I'm taking this, placing that on top 
and I'm just pressing that down. And why have I told you to prepare the antennas? Of course, because we have to include them here. Oh my goodness, I have, <laughs> I have forgotten that step yesterday in the German video. And of course, little running gag, I am forgetting it here as well. Nice, Louisa, nice. Of course, please put the antennas in between of these both layers before you glue the top layer. Okay, so then um, the one with this crazy effect here is still drying. It's not totally dry here. You can see it's still white from the Mod Podge. So I'm just uh, letting this here because that is the layer where this glass butterfly will go and I will just glue the top one here in the same way like this one so this little guy is completely dry now and now I want to take a white crayon to make him a little bit more outstanding because this glass effect is only on the middle butterfly and I want to have him popping out really much so I'm going over this with my crayon relatively randomly like this and then I'm smearing this with my finger to get the crayon into the little damages that we've just made here to bring this effect out a little bit more a little bit of the crayon will now stay on the surface here on the embossing powder and the rest will go into these little areas here um, and I don't want to have this like this milky effect so I'm taking just a paper towel and I'm going over this and this way you get the crayon only into the creases crease is that the right word and the rest will stay like normal do you know what I mean this looks now in between of these little damages like here and I think that is great I will just do that for the other side as well I am so in love that is really cool and I think this will stand out really much now when we put that here oh yes oh and now we can do the same thing for this one here. We can just put some glue, the antennas, don't forget the antennas, Louise, and then glue him here to this base. Here we go. Haha. <laughs> I really like that. And I really like the contrast to the other both. Just wonderful, Louisa. Just wonderful. So now, of course, we have to attach this thing here to the page, of course. I mean, look at this. <laughs> so I'm just turning the journal around. And then I'm checking where I want to staple that. And then I'm making a little knot. Like this. And then, now the knot is here, I don't know if you can see that. The knot is here, and now that is really important. Here's the knot, and now I have to staple exactly here next to the knot. So that this stays then in place like this. Do you know what I mean? Then it is fixed to the page, and it can still, still be um, moved a little bit like this, because it's a dangle, you know what I mean. A dangle should be able to dangle. <laughs> so I'm stapling this here and now you can see the knot is directly next to this staple thingy and it can move a little bit like this of course but it can't move into that direction it can't fall off anymore. Next I would like to stamp some numbers to my postage stamps I mean, we need numbers to tell the worth of the postage stamp, of course. <laughs> Normal postage stamps have that as well. So I want to add this here. And 
now <laughs> that's coming a really spontaneous thing because yesterday in my video um, for the German video I have told my viewers that I want to stamp some numbers that have a meaning to me so I have chosen three numbers for my butterflies here but instead of telling them what the meaning is I've decided to run a little very spontaneous giveaway so I will tell you the numbers that I'm stamping here and of course you have also as my English viewers I mean you have also the chance to win something now if you tell me the answer to the following question I am stamping 17 and 24 and 452 if you can tell me what those numbers mean to me so what's the meaning behind those numbers then you can win something the first person that writes the right answer to the comment section will get a little surprise from me that is going to be a mystery package of junk journal supplies so that means you can write a comment and tell me what those three numbers mean to me what is the meaning be behind those numbers 17 452 and 24 if you know me really well, you know the answer <laughs> and you can, yeah, I think you can think about that and you can come to the answer. If you know the answer, write a comment and the person that writes the right answer first will get a little surprise from me. And by the way, this is not the official Defamoramba giveaway. Yeah, so Barbara and myself, we are um, telling you in our videos that there's a giveaway for Defamoramba. This is not the official giveaway that will come a little bit later, and you will get information about that as well a little bit later in the videos. Um, so please don't be confused. That means there are now two giveaways this one and the one that will come in the future. So <clears throat> of course we need or not of course but I want to add some postmarks as well um, because yeah just because <laughs> and for that I'm using these stamps here they come from the field notes stamp set by Tim Holtz and Stampers Anonymous and I'm just stamping one here and I really like that that you know this effect I'm stamping that a little bit to the butterfly itself and a little bit to the background so that it can make this effect. I really love that. So I think we need a second one like this. And I want to add a third one but a little bit smaller here like this. And last but not least I want to add some white splatters, as you can guess. So it looks like this now, and I'm really, really, really happy with how this came out. And of course, I'm hoping that you like this as well. If you want to imitate this and you want to post your result on social media, then please use the hashtag Defemoramba. You can find that also written down in the description box so that you can just copy and paste it. I know the word is really difficult, so please just feel free to copy and paste that to don't write it wrong. Otherwise, the other people can't find your posts. And of course, you can also use the hashtag Defemoramba for your own YouTube videos. If you have a channel, then please feel invited to make your own Defemoramba videos. Uh, I'm hoping that I will see some butterfly shaped postage stamps in the next days. I'm sure I will <laughs> because you are really crazy people and you are so cool with 
crafting what we show in our videos and I'm really really excited to see your results for this idea. Please don't forget to check out Barbara's video. It's already online. The link to her channel is in the description box and there you can find another idea on today's prompt and I wish you very much fun with her idea as well. See you tomorrow and don't forget to think about 17, 452 and 24. If you know the answer, what those numbers are meaning to me, then please leave a comment and take the chance to win a little surprise package. See you tomorrow. Bye bye.